Hey, how you doing? Scott here. And in this video, I'm going to share with you what I think are the top 10 essential things every bass player should have in their gig bag. Let's check it out. Hey guys, so how's it going? Um, we're here in SBL Towers. I've got the uh, I've got the axe, the old P base, and we were actually just writing out some, or I was writing out some lesson plans and things like that. And I was talking to DMac, who's on the other side of the camera. Hey DMac, uh, and said we were talking about what we should, what, what people should take to gigs. And I thought, should we do a video right now, just where I, I tell them my favourite ten things. So I've written down my favourite 10 things. I'm just going to put the bass down there for a minute. Um, obviously, taking a bass with you is super important. But um, I think, you know, it's really, really great information because if you're anything like me, you know, I have forgotten things in the past to take to gigs with me. There was a famous occasion when I turned up to a gig without a strap. That's on the list. Um, so let's talk about the 10 essential things that you should take to every gig and I've also got some bonuses at the end of it for you if you're a pro musician as well stuff that you really need to consider taking as well so the first I'm going to be looking off here I'm not going to pretend that I've memorized this stuff so the first thing is spare strings I know this seems stupid but the amount of people that I've seen break strings on gigs and they haven't got a spare set of strings you know so spare strings I just want to give a massive shout out to Daryl to, uh, to Dunlop for sending me these. I'm using some Dunlop Super Brights at the minute, and they're super sexy. Um, the next thing, it kind of goes with the strings, is the snippers. Again, and I've made this, this mistake myself, I've turned up to a gig and I've had spare strings, <laughs> broken a string and needed to put some strings on and haven't had any snippers. And if you've ever tried to... Um, snip off the end of an E string when you fit it to a bass. You know, you, you feel my pain. You've kind of got to wiggle it back and forward, you know, a thousand times before it'll snap off. So yeah, snippers, super important. What's next on the list? Okay, so the next thing on the list is a power extension. So you guys in the States call this a power strip. Um, some sort of extension where you can plug some stuff in. You know, this is, I've made this, this mistake before um, in my past just you know get one in your bag for me personally i have a bag that i keep loads of stuff all my gig stuff goes in this what i've got my gig bag that I keep my base in but i've also got a bag that i just like a man bag i'll show you in a minute after i've got out all the stuff you'll see my man bag and um i just have everything in there i use it during the gig and then it goes back in the man bag and then i wait until the next gig and then it comes out of the man bag so just get a bag. But anyway, so power strips, super important. You don't know where you're going to be on stage. You don't know whether there's going to be a, a plug socket next to you. So you need to have a power strip. Uh, what are we looking at next? Okay. Oh, yeah. So screwdrivers and Allen wrenches or Allen keys if you're over here in the UK. Um, you, what I use is a multi-tool. I'll get DMAC to put up a screenshot so you can see this. A multi-tool. So it's got everything in one space because if you're anything like me... I lose stuff all the time and yeah, it's just my personality. I'm a bit, you know, messy like that. So get a multi-tool and it's just in case, you know, I'm just going to grab my base. It's just in case, you know, like any of these slip, if you need to do your intonation or anything like that, whole, like loads of stuff can go wrong. If you need to, if you've got some loose wiring, you need to take the scratch plate off or you've got an active base and the, the, the battery isn't easily gettable to, you know, you're going to need a screwdriver and some wrenches to help you out in those situations. Next thing, huge. Now this is huge, guys, huge. Please get a tuner and take it to your gigs. I'm sure you've all felt my pain when you're watching a band and they're, the whole band are out of tune with each other. It's so easy, you just need a tuner. In fact, unfortunately, um, I've seen a really, really well-known bass player um, very confidently, I'm not going to mention any names, very confidently telling people that these are rubbish and you don't need these and you should do it all by ear. Now, I'm not saying that that is wrong. You should be able to um, tune by ear, but just take these on the gig. I was unfortunate um, years ago to, to go to 
the, the bass player I'm talking to, to go to one of his gigs and right in the middle of the set, there was just this epic tuning thing happened and, and he didn't have a tuner and he just, you know, we all sat there for like five minutes. It was totally just crickets, you know, five minutes while the band tried to tune and then they'd play a song and it wasn't quite in tune. And so just do yourselves a favor. Don't fall into the same trap and get a tuner. I use a Boss Chromatic Tuner, but I've got, um, I've got one on my iPhone. Well, I'll tell you what app it is actually, it's really cool. But the, this is a free app that I use. It is Tuner Lite, L-I-T-E, Tuner Lite. There's a whole load of tuner apps, so they're really good. You can also get these ones now that stick on the top of the headstock. They're really great. Uh, what's next on the list? Okay, again, huge. And talking about horror stories, I've seen somebody being sent off stage for not having this at a spare lead, you know. And the guy, unfortunately, was sent off lead. He, his lead kept on crackling, blah, blah, blah. It was a complete disaster. The singer just sent him off stage. So not only a spare lead from your bass to your amp, this is really important, guys. Not only a spare lead, but if you're using pedals, spare patch case, patch leads I always have them in the man bag of doom and also I really like to have a I call them kettle leads because you know old school kettles used to be plugged in can you remember when kettles used to be plugged in with these yeah DMAC's got a little bit of old school in there <laughs> there's a little bit of old school in there DMAC um, but yeah I always have a spare one of these as well just in case because you can't be too careful what's next on the list oh yeah spare stand Oh, not even a spare stand, but a stand. I use, I've got loads of stands. This is just lying around the uh, SBL towers today. I like using small ones. They're not as sturdy as the, the, the stands that hold the actual neck, but it's just, it gives you something to put your bass on. I can't, I can't you know, tell you the amount of times I've seen guitars and basses getting knocked over at gigs and things spilt on them and all kinds of stuff. So, you know, just get a stand and take it with you. Leave it in the car if you had to, if you have to. The next thing, if you're using pedals or have an active bass, batteries, super important, nine volt batteries. I've got a, you know, huge amount of them lying around everywhere. Like DMAX on with you the other day, testing them. <laughs> you can test them with your tongue and see if they're live or not. Uh, you get a vibe whether you know you get sort of you know accustomed to what it feels like when they're live uh, the next thing I know this sounds really ridiculous is make sure you have a spare strap just in case you forget to take yours like for instance this base is lying here it hasn't got a strap on it am I likely to pick it up and put it in a case in a rush and not think about putting the strap on yep knowing me I am so I've always got a spare strap in the man bag as well. Man bag. What's that from? Is that from Friends? Man bag. I'm sure that's from oh, an episode of Friends. Joey. Joey man bag. I've got this man bag thing going on. And the next thing as well, and this is really important for everybody. It's earplugs. Take some earplugs. You don't know what the environment that you're playing is like, going to be like. You know, you might be sat almost on top of the drummer. You're going to have to put. You know, you, at least if you're on whichever side the drummer's on. Okay. This is what I do. If the drummer was on my right hand side, if I'm sitting on the hi hat, if I'm standing on the hi hat side of his instrument, okay, I'm going to put um, an earplug in my right ear just to sort of, you know take the take the the harshness out of what's going on. I don't want to, you know, the, our ears are one of our most important tools, if not the most important that we a tool that we have as musicians. So make sure you're not damaging them. And you know when you go to if you're going out to nightclubs and things like that, and there's crazy you know crazy music. <laughs> Put some earplugs in and save those ears. So that is the top 10, okay? But I've got, I don't know how many other things that I've got. Probably one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, I think. Eight more things. And this is for you guys that are doing kind of uh, a lot of gigs. So pro guys, okay? So this is the pro, the top eight. Is it eight? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, top eight for you pro guys, okay? So the first thing is a string cloth. You'll really save your strings. After every, you know, after every set, just wipe them down. If not, I've seen people do it in, bet in between tunes, where they wipe their strings in between tunes. It just gives this, it just saves your strings. Uh, the next thing is a torch. A little mag light can be amazing. I'm sure, you, especially if you're in theatre pits or dark, um, you know, theatre stages where all the lights are low and you need to check that everything's plugged in. 
Just get a mag light, it can save your bacon. Save your bacon? Who knows what that means? Um, music stand, again, leave it in your car. Don't take it out of your car. Have two music stands, one at home, one that lives in the car that just goes to gigs, and one that, you know, comes stays at home. So one that goes to gigs, one that stays at home. Make sure you have a music stand with you at gigs. Music stand light. Uh, how many times, if you're a reading musician, have you been on a gig, everything's great in the rehearsal, and then it gets to the show, and then the lights go down. <laughs> and then you hear the conductor, or you see the conductor, or you hear the drum, drummer count off. You're in trouble if you haven't got a music stand light. And a lot of the time they are provided on theatre shows, but do yourself a favour and just take one. I've got two that clip on either side of the music stand. They're kind of like on telescopic. They look like antennae from an ant or other insect. Um, next thing, this is a really cool one. Clothes pegs, you know, that you put on the washing line. You know, you hang your clothes up on a washing line. If you do outdoor gigs, they, these can be a lifesaver. If you're, a, it's not for anything other than holding your music on the music stand. It, it, I've seen disasters. In fact, I've got to tell you this one. This wasn't outside. This was inside. It was one of my uh, first pro gigs. I was sitting there doing a gig. The first, it was the first show, actually, that I did with a band. It was in the theatre, and we were on the back of the stage, full house. So we're playing the... Uh, the, 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 the intro to the show, I don't know if it said did did did, but anyway, let's say it did say did did did. We're doing the intro to the show and the dancers walked on stage, okay? So a big line of dancers and they've got huge feathers, probably like six, maybe eight foot tall, these feathers, huge things, big pink things they were. And I've got a music stand just full of music, just the full show, I'm there glued to it. You know, it's the first time doing the show I'm reading. And as the dancers walked on, they walked on sideways and then they span round like that. And as they span round, one of the dancers hit my music stand and sent my music across the stage. Okay, so that would have been another great, you know, great example of when I should have been using clothes pegs on that stand. If you're working with uh, dancers with huge feathers, who knows? But generally, it's just for using them outside when it's windy. You don't want your music to be blown away. Uh, the next thing is the real book. I don't know if it's over there in the, in the bookcase. A real book, if you're gonna be doing any jazz sessions or jam sessions, stuff like that, it's great to have a real book. If you end up with a bunch of guys and you know some of those guys don't know a lot of tunes, that real book can really help you out. So again, it's something that just stays in my man bag all the time. I've got a couple of real books knocking about. The next one is a pen and paper, super important. Okay, I really like Sharpies with the, uh, you get a, a fine tip and you get a, a fat tip as well. I also recommend having a pencil as well if you're working on theatre shows so you can make notes on the, on the pad, on the score, without the, uh, without the, the musical director wanting to uh, kill you because you've written on it with a uh, pen. So make sure if you're writing on anybody else's score that it's in pencil but on your own you know, have a pen. And I always have a pad of paper as well if I want to take notes. And the final one for me, a bit of a wild card, this one. A bit of a wild card is a volume pedal. For me, I really, really, like it's not essential, but I really love having a volume pedal on a gig. It just means I don't have to, I can get the endings. If it's like, if we're doing theatre work or anything like that, I have to be really sensitive with the endings. I don't want the note to be bah. You know, you can do a palm mute where you roll the palm on and make the it die down like that. But the this is just great for it. And it means I don't have to fiddle around with volume knobs. I can just stand on the volume pedal while I'm turning pages um, if I'm doing that. And it just, for me, I just love it. And I use a Dunlop, again, Volume X. And it's nice. It's, it's super nice. Nice action. Nice action. I've got another one here that isn't a volume pedal. You can get these. You can get these, but it's just crap, right? Just, it just feels awful where this one feels. Let's do that again for you. <laughs> it's 
So super nice, smooth action. There's nothing better than a smooth action, is there? So anyway, guys, hopefully you've enjoyed this. How many ever tips I had for you that you should, you know, the stuff that you should have in your gig bag. Homework. Let's talk about homework. What can we, you know, what homework can I tell you? Okay, what is... What is your number one thing that you'd take to the gig with you other than a bass? So the number one thing that you'd have in your gig bag that I haven't covered today. And I'd also like you to share any disaster stories that you have. I've got some great ones of friends turning up to gigs without bases. Um, I've done flights where bases have been stuck in airports and you know, loads of cool stuff like that. But if you share that in the comments, I will read it afterwards. I love listening, I love reading your comments. Um, other than that, take it easy. Go to scottsbasslessons.com. Check out all the stuff. There's loads of free stuff. You can get the free toolkit as well. I will link it up here on the page. Pew, pew somewhere. D Mac will do that. And other than that, take it easy, and I'll see you in the shed. Two thousand and fifteen Kickstarter challenge. Hey, everybody. Hey, hey, guys. Hi, everybody. Hello, all. Hello.